Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Okay, today we're going to talk about the basic approach to the chest radiograph. Um, as with other studies, it's important to understand the patient uh, clinical context, the indication for the study, and then we'll have a sense of limitations of the study. Uh, first thing you tend to think, think about when assessing a chest radiograph is looking at the lines and tubes, if they're appropriately positioned. Then I like to use an outside-in approach, both first on the frontal and then on the lateral, kind of using a similar approach, looking at the extrathoracic soft tissues, the osseous structures, and then ultimately the airways, lungs, the pleura, and then heart and mediastinal structures, okay? So let's get started. So first, you know, it's important to get a sense as to what is going on with the patient and what they're trying to look for on a chest radiograph. Um, when, when we start between the frontal and lateral view, it's good to get an overall sense of the anatomy and to see if this patient has any support devices. This particular study demonstrates none, but if there were, you'd have to ch just check, are they appropriately positioned, uh, you know, are, are they uh, where they should be, and that's like a whole discussion in and of itself. In terms of a generalized approach, just going through the anatomy, you know, I like to start peripherally and look at the um, exothoracic soft tissues, for example, around the upper extremities, the lower neck, and then peripherally at the upper, you know, upper abdomen. We're looking for abnormal contour, density, calcification, um, uh, subcutaneous air, things like that. Um, in patients, you'll, you'll, you'll also notice a soft tissue projecting over the uh, upper chest, and you'll see this um, both on the frontal and lateral. Typically, then we'll go through and look at the osseous structures, and then you know you can zoom and window and try and get a better sense of this. And I typically like to start with the imaged upper extremities and take a look at the humerus, um, scapula, clavicle, do that bilaterally. And then I like to go and look very carefully at the imaged spine, looking at the pedicles, the uh, spinous process, making sure all those are intact and visible, um, windowing as needed. And then I'll take a look at the ribs um, and look, to, look kind of in each each set of ribs looking first at the posterior ribs, the lateral aspect of the ribs, and, and, and then the anterior aspect of the ribs. And again, we're, we're always looking for loosens, abnormal loosency, sclerosis, or, or density. We're looking for displaced fractures. We're looking for abnormal splaying or displacement of these osseous structures. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see extra ribs, sometimes you'll see anatomic variants, sometimes you'll see missing structures or other abnormalities that can kind of key you into more subtle underlying uh, pathology. Okay, so now having covered kind of the more, uh, the, the structures outside the visceral chest, we're going to we're gonna look and I, I like to start with the airway and follow the airway from the superior aspect of the study down into the main stem bronchi. And you can be very easy to go through to miss contour abnormality, extrinsic effect, internal filling defects, um, or, you know, mass lesions. So I always take, be very careful to start with the airways and look very carefully. And then what I'll do is I typically do the pleura before the lung, before the lung parenchyma, and I just take a quick look first around the periphery of the lung, um, the lungs at the pleura, looking for abnormal contour, mass lesions, lucency as is in the setting of um, pneumothorax. They can be very subtle, so it's important, you know, it can be important to zoom into window and to look very carefully, knowing that the, that the pleura actually kind of goes be, be, both behind and in front of the heart and below the diaphragms. And we're looking also for effusions or blunting the cosmophrenic angles and for any sort of contour abnormality um, at when the pleura meets the mediastinum, okay? And then what I like to do for comparing the lungs on the frontal is I basically look from side to side and look for equivalent um, lucency or equivalent normal air, uh, air spaces, looking for uh, very carefully for you know, airspace opacity for nodules, for tubular densities, for abnormal lucency. Okay, and we're going to do that comparing side to side and remembering that there's, um, you know, a uh, lung that goes behind the heart and below the diaphragms here. And notice and remembering also that missed abnormalities tend to occur at the apices, adjacent to the mediastinum, behind the hyla, behind the heart, and, you know, behind the diaphragms here. And then finally, um, having quickly covered that anatomy, uh, we're going to look at the 
contours the medius dinum, first at the paratracheal stripe and down to the, where the SVC contour is, the right aspect of the heart and the cardiophrenic angle. Okay, and we're going to do the same on the other side from the paratracheal stripe down to you know the aortic knob, and the AP window, the area of the pulmonary, the main pulmonary artery. You know, left uh, atrial appendage, left aspect of the heart, following this all the way down, and looking at the various mediastinal lines that project over the midline. All right, we're gonna take a look at the highlights, see if they're displaced, enlarged, if there's any mass lesion or abnormal opacity um, projecting over those. And all the while, when we're looking for these concepts, we're looking for loss of the abnormal concepts. We're looking for bulging. We're looking for displacement. Um, we're trying to see if there's any sort of abnormal density that overlays those, and each any of those. Um, you know, gives us a clue into any various number of underlying pathology. Um, we're, we're also taking a look in, in, in all of these contours to see if the heart is wide, wide, you know, wide and relative to the chest, depending on also the technique that's been performed. Okay, and that basically covers our view of the uh, the frontal view or our assessment of the frontal view. Uh, let's take a look quickly at the lateral view, and we're going to be correlating between the two as we find any abnormality. But using a similar approach, what I will typically do is look for first very peripherally at the soft tissues, looking for abnormal contour, density, calcification, air, etc. Um, and then I'll look at the osseous structures, the ribs, to see if there's any sort of obvious displacement, looking at the sternum to see if there's any sort of um, abnormality there, posteriorly, and then finally at the spine, looking for compression deformities for listhesis. Um, we're also going to uh, ultimately uh, look at, you know, kind of at the same time looking for increasing lucency as we go down the spine, you know, loss of that normal increase in lucency more inferiorly known as a spine sign, giving you a sense of an abnormal opacity projecting behind the heart. So uh, having covered kind of more peripherally, I'm going to look at the lungs and just make sure, yes, if that, that is preserved, that the retrocardiac clear space, retrosternal clear space uh, is preserved, and also infrahylar, um, that these kind of general areas where we're expecting a certain degree of lucency, that those are generally preserved. And then you can kind of also see the heart and see if it's particularly enlarged in AP di uh, uh, dimension. And that basically um, allows us to get a sense of any additional pathology. Um, looking at the diaphragm to make that they're sharp. So basically, similarly, using an inside-out approach to look at the soft tissues, the bones, the lungs, and then kind of the pleura, particularly this posterior aspect, and the lung, you know, uh, air spaces, uh, inclusive, and then including um, the hilum and then heart, uh, and then correlating between the lateral and the frontal. Usually before I close any chest x-ray, I go through a quick rundown of major acute findings that I definitely do want, not want to miss, abnormal air in the pleura, like the pneumothorax and the mediastinum, subdiaphragmatic, and then the common uh, blind spots of pulmonary nodules and want to make sure I'm not missing a subtle nodule or lung cancer, any other sort of um, kind of more indolent but uh, serious pathology, again, at the, um, generally at the apices, around the mediastinum, um, behind the hyla, behind the diaphragm. So just be very careful as a double check. Um, and you can kind of look in similar areas on the lateral um, before I close any chest x-ray.